I was born in Fairbanks, Alaska. My mother is a full-blood Athabascan Indian woman who was born on the Yukon River at a place called Hohudodutatin. And it is a beautiful village along the banks of the mighty Yukon River. She was raised there and uh, in the traditional Indian way. And she lived on the Yukon River for all of her childhood and into her early adulthood. She experienced uh, a lot of suffering in the, her marriage and she fled from the village to the urban community of Fairbanks to make a new beginning. And uh, not long after that, she began to attend bars and drink. And so I grew up in all of my childhood in an alcoholic home with a single parent, trying her best to raise us in a new and different culture. I was raised in a home that was not safe. As you can imagine, being raised in an alcoholic home created all kinds of dangers for a child. For children in that home, it was dangerous. Oftentimes there would be parties, there would be strangers, lots of strangers, and drunkenness and fighting. And there were times when we did not have any money, we did not have any food. My mother would disappear, sometimes for days. I remember at the, about the age of five years old uh, that I was uh, sexually molested by a man who was in our home was not a part of our family, was not anybody that I knew. This experience changed the whole rest of my life. And the sad thing is it was not the last time that this would occur. There were other instances of abuse against me that completely changed who I was from a carefree, happy child to a damaged teenager who felt isolated and alone, carried deep, deep shame. As it turned out, it was illegitimate shame. It was not my shame. It was the shame of the abusers. But I took it as my own, and I carried it in my heart as if it were my shame. I could never tell my friends about being afraid and frightened in my bed at night. I could never tell them about the loneliness and the, the shame that I would feel after someone would abuse me. I could never tell them about the fear of being alone. This began to change who I was. And by the time I was at the age of 13, I had already been in jail. I was drinking to the place of blacking out. I found it necessary to utilize substances and alcohol, sex, and other ways to try to escape what was going on inside of me, which was a very, very uh, tortured existence inside. I was determined that I would take my life. I had no future. There was nothing that uh, appealed to me about my life. There was no, no hope. I had no dreams. I had no, uh, nothing to look forward to. And so I figured that it would just be best if I just uh, died. It was during this time that God began to speak into my life. It was during this time that I began to realize that something was, was uh, needed to change because I really didn't want to die. I really did want to live. And that is what is so tragic about a suicidal um, mindset is that it's only seen as a way to escape because no other way seems possible. But it was then that God showed up in my life. It was then that he began to speak into my heart. And I, by, by saying that, speak into my heart, I mean, I began to feel drawn 
to something outside of myself for an answer. But I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what that looked like. I was not a church-going person and never really had been. And so uh, I was just walking around in town one day and a man walked up to me and he said, have you met the Lord? And as he spoke those words, I felt something happen inside of me that woke me up. I felt a peace begin to come over me that had nothing to do with this man. It had nothing to do with um, my own decision. It was just that God, when I heard those words, God touched me in a way that I will never forget. The fear, the suicidal thoughts, they disappeared instantaneously. And I began to feel a peace over my body, over my mind. And I told him later that day, I said, yes, I would like to know the Lord. And he led me into a prayer uh, to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Jesus forgave all my sins. He cleansed me from all that pain, from all of the shame that I thought was mine but wasn't, from all of my own mistakes, from all of the guilt that I carried, for all of the people that I hurt. And I began to realize that I have a new life, I have a new hope. That night I went home and I slept through the night like I hadn't since I don't know when. And I put away all of those things. In fact, my desire for them just disappeared, just replaced by the joy of what God had done in my life. Replaced by the joy of feeling Him so close to me, inside of me, like I'd never felt anything before. And at that point, I determined that from the age of 19 years, I would begin to serve Him with all of the rest of my life. That year I went to Bible school and I graduated four years later. I met my wife and together we began to serve Christ. We decided to return to Alaska and we went out to my village and we began to share our faith with others. We have no roads to my village. We are out in the wilderness next to a river. And there I was a hunter, I was a fisherman, and I was also a trapper but I was also a fisherman of people. I learned how to fly, and we began to fly around the villages, telling people about Jesus Christ and about how he had changed our lives. I became vocal about our problems in our village. There was a lot of drinking there. There was a lot of need for help for children, for elders. And soon my village sent me to meetings to represent them. And in time, I became a leader of our tribe. In my area, there are 43 tribes, and they elect one chief to represent them in a regional area in the nation across our state. And those 43 tribes, all of their chiefs come together, and in a time in my life, they elected me to represent them. The area of our tribes is about the size of Texas, so we are a rather large area. And eventually, I begin to travel nationally representing our issues before Congress, before the President. I represented them to the best of my ability, and I represented them in my witness of Jesus Christ, and I always gave him the glory. I served my tribe for 20 years uh, and the tribes of my region. Today I am a pastor of a church. And we have a vision of reaching these villages in Alaska. We are training people. We are providing them with healing. Uh, we are walking them through the pain of their childhoods. We are walking them through their addictions. My heart is to bring them into a healing of their hearts because so many have been abused. So many have suffered at the hands of others. And I have an answer for them. And I have a story about my own charity, and I love to share it. I love to tell them about what it is that God did for me. And I just want to say that there are many hurting, many hurting young people. I've been there. I know what that feels like. I know what it looks like. And I just want you to know that Jesus made a difference in my life. He turned me around. He gave me peace and a reason for living. 
that did not include a selfish pursuit of pleasure. And with that, I have served him faithfully these many years. And I'll serve him for the, all of my remaining years. Today, I talk to our teens and I encourage them. I tell them, you don't have to go that way. There's no reason that you need to go through the suffering that I and many others have done. There is a place of peace. There is an answer. There is fulfillment. And that fulfillment is through a person and through a relationship. And that person is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I just invite you to explore that for yourself. Invite him. Invite him. Ask him. Believe me, he will hear you. My name is Will Mayo. My Indian name is Santlito. This was the truth, and I dare you to live it.